Thank you for joining us for the fifth down. As we mentioned before the break, the schedule was a little light this Friday in Northeast Michigan. It was, Kyle, with two games taking place tomorrow and the Hale Eagles on a bye week. There was just four games in the area, but as they say, sometimes it's not the quantity, it's the quality. We start in Oscoda where the Owls face the Owl Corner Tigers in a big dipper battle. This game was a track meet from the start. Owls ball, Hunter Huckabee will not go down. He takes that one 21 yards for the touchdown scamper. Extra point is good, Owls lead 7-0. After a score on each side, the Tigers have the ball. Trailing 14-8 in their workhorse, Brock Franklin will drag some Owls into the end zone with them for an 11-yard score, and the game is tied at 14. Owls trying to respond, fourth and two at midfield, and their quarterback Jacob Malik says, don't worry boys, I got this one, makes a couple of defenders miss, cuts it to the outside and finds the end zone, a 46-yard touchdown, an extra point, puts the Owls ahead, 21-14. Very next drive, the Tigers' Jack Hutchinson has the football, but everyone is fooled. It's really the quarterback, Alex Stevenson, who has it on the far side of the field. They get the two points and go ahead, 22-21. Malik and the Owls will get their lead back on the next drive. A 20-yard touchdown puts the Owls up 28-22, but this game was far from over from there in the final seconds. The Tigers came back and won in a nuts, absolutely nuts game. 56-55, Alcona wins. Now we shift to eight-man football where the Posen Vikings and Cedarville Trojans brought their undefeated conference records to the table in a clash for first place in the division. Posen in their home red, the Trojans in their visiting white jerseys. Posen starts with the ball and the first play from scrimmage. Skyler Tolgetsky breaks one tackle initially, then bounces it outside, and from there it's a foot race. No one catches him, and the Vikings get the start that they needed. With the extra point, the Vikings go up 7 to nothing. Trojans' first drive after the ground game gets them downfield. Quarterback Trey Norris drops back to find Jordan Bailey and Rumble, big man Rumble. He powers through defenders to pay dirt. The Trojans would go for two and fail, so they'd lead 7-6. to six. After forcing a punt, Cedarville in business again. This time, Bailey takes it on the reverse, and he's like a Mack truck. You just can't stop him. That's another six, and this time with the two, Cedarville leads 14-7. to seven. Trojans with the ball again, looking to make something happen before the half. Norris looking downfield, attempting to find Kurt Makovich, but he has no idea the ball is coming. Tolgetsky picks it off easily and takes it all the way back to the house. With the extra point, the Vikings tie it at 14, and that's your halftime score. Second half now, Posen backed up on their own five-yard line. Evan Shook takes the jet sweep left side, cuts back to the middle of the field, making a man miss there, and from there, he outruns everyone on the field. The Vikings go up 21-14, to and they're able to hold on down the stretch. They win this one 28-26. Whittemore Prescott made their debut in Big Dipper play last week with a win. This week, they jumped back out of conference play with a game against the Tawas Braves. The Braves still looking for that first win of the season, looking to make a statement against Whittemore on the Cardinals' home turf. First quarter, Tawas knocking on the door, and they break through. Jacob Stack shuffles in for six. Untouched, Braves lead 6-0. Now it's Whittemore's turn to march downfield, and Chase Laszlo making some moves and getting a huge chunk of yardage. The senior will finally get chased down, just a yard shy of the end zone, setting up a scoring shot for the Cards, and they will take advantage as Blake Liddell scores on the keeper. The game's tied at six apiece. In the second quarter, Whittemore has the rock. They're marching downfield. Jeffrey Swain picks up some yards to get the chains moving. And from there, Dakota Kenny takes a goal line carry into the end zone to put Whittemore ahead, 12-6. The Braves would then score in a touchdown from Jacob Crum to tie the game at 12. But in the end, Whittemore Prescott gets the win 28-12 and improves their record to 3-3 on the year. It's time for that game in Rogers City, isn't it Kyle? That's right. The Hurons and Thunderbolts both won two of their first three games, but since they haven't been able to get it going, but tonight one of them would get back on the winning side. The Hurons in that home orange hosting the Thunderbolts from Mayo in their visiting white. Already 8-0 Rogers City. Second quarter, Caleb Karsten rolls out left side, throws deep downfield to find Alex Henska, and he's tackled inside Mayo territory. A few plays later this time, the play action, he rolls out right side, and he finds his other tight end, Alex Altman, in the back of the end zone, and the Hurons go up 14-0. The Thunderbolts looking to get on the board before the half, but the pairing of Gavin Wieselnack and Quentin Kelly aren't having any of it. 
That's a sack, and the Hurons go into the locker room, still up two possessions. Second half, Roger City back on the attack. Kelly in the backfield now. He takes the carry, busts it up the gut. Nothing there, so he bounces it right side. Big gain inside Thunderbolts territory. Now inside the 10, the give is to the fullback, Jacob Hine. He easily gets it across the goal line, and the Hurons go up 20 to zip. Mayo not backing down, though, in their next drive. Quarterback Riley McMaster calls his own number. He scores, and with the two, Mayo is down just 12. But Roger City is just too much to handle. The Hurons take this one 26-8 and put an end to their three-game losing streak. Like we said at the top of the show, there were a number of games taking place not in the area and two games taking place tomorrow. So as we wind down, now is the perfect time to address those games. The Alpena Wildcats even their record on the year to 3-3 three three with a 38-7 win over Sheboygan. The Cats had 149 rushing yards with four touchdowns combined. Alex Arch, he had a 94-yard kick return while Evan Letourneau chipped in with a field goal. Alpena is at home next week against TC Central. In the Augre Sims, Wolverines had an eventful game with homecoming and alumni weekend falling on the same night, but they lost 50-14 to to Burton Atherton and will try to turn the page next week against Mile. For eight-man football, the Onaway Cardinals went into Pelston and easily got their fourth win on the season tonight. The 84 points scored by the Cardinals is their highest output of the entire season, and for the Hornets, they stay winless. This now sets up a huge matchup in the Bridge Alliance next week. The Cardinals will travel to Posen to meet the undefeated Vikings in a battle for local bragging rights. And Saturday, we have some football taking place during the day and at night in Atlanta. The Hillman Tigers square off against the Huskies in a little dipper battle. The Tigers trying to stay atop the conference while the Huskies trying to get that first win of the season and have the home field advantage on their side. Then Saturday night, under the lights in Joburg, the Cardinals welcome Detroit Consortium for a 7 p.m. kickoff. It's the first time those two teams have ever faced off on the football field. The Cards will going to bounce back from their 27-21 loss to St. Ignace last week and stay in the run for first place in the Ski Valley Conference. The Cougars, meanwhile, coming off a 41-14 win over Detroit Delta Prep.